So once upon a time in the 1980s, we didn't used to have CGI, and instead we had all these creepy films with puppets in them. And I was terrified as a little kid. And one of the movies that was very creepy to me was Labyrinth, which came out in 1986, starring David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. And it was directed by the super talented, amazing Jim Henson, who is known for Sesame Street, which I was obsessed with Sesame Street, Big Bird, Snuffleupagus, you know those puppets. <laughs> I am 41 years old and I have never seen Labyrinth all the way through until yesterday. I just sat down and watched it. So I want to review it for you and give you my two cents. I want to warn you, there may be some spoilers in this. So if you don't want to see any spoilers, fair warning, there may be movie spoilers in this. This movie is over 30 years old, so most of you have probably already seen it. So you can watch Labyrinth for free on your phone using the Tubi app and I just paired it with my TV and watched it on the screen in my bedroom. But you can watch it on your phone however you want to. There's a lot of interesting, nostalgic, older, free movies on Tubi, so something to check out. And I'll put a link in the description box if you wanna download that app and watch Labyrinth yourself if you've never seen it. Let me begin by reading you the synopsis of Labyrinth according to the Internet Movie Database. 16-year-old Sarah must solve a labyrinth to rescue her baby brother when he is taken by the Goblin King. This is considered an adventure epic, dark fantasy slash fairy tale genre film. I feel like people who are gonna love this movie, if you love anything 80s or nostalgic. So back in the 80s, they used to play all the credits before the movie, and it says that the music is written by David Bowie and composed by David Bowie. So that's pretty cool if you like his style. How is David Bowie as an actor? I thought he did a pretty good job. Like I didn't, he did well enough that I didn't question it. I believed it. I thought all of the acting was good in this movie. So Jennifer Connelly is one of my favorite actresses and she is a huge reason of why I decided to watch this movie in the first place. She was in Top Gun Maverick, um, playing Tom Cruise's significant other, A Beautiful Mind, which Jennifer Connelly's role in A Beautiful Mind made her like a very respected actress to me. Uh, I thought she performed really well in that. She was in Blood Diamond with Leonardo DiCaprio, a couple of the Spider-Man movies, and Hulk. So she is definitely a force to be reckoned with, I feel like, as an actress. But also, can we just talk about how gorgeous she is? Like, I wouldn't mind if I looked like Jennifer Connelly. She's got that dark hair and those beautiful blue eyes. And when she filmed this movie, she was 16 years old. I feel like her acting in this movie, like, you can definitely tell that she's a young teenager super cute in the movie and to me she plays a very innocent slash spoiled teenager in the opening um she's doing some acting drama she takes her family for granted ends up losing her baby brother as i read in the synopsis so the beginning of the movie i realized why i was not able to watch this movie as a little kid there are creepy little gremlin demonic looking puppets in the opening of the movie that go and steal this baby yeah no i as a five-year-old i would have been screaming and having nightmares i already struggled with nightmares as a five-year-old there there is a very good reason why i didn't see this you know i had to contend with chucky the doll that was gonna kill me when i was a little girl and I couldn't get to bed most nights of my childhood because of Chucky, let alone have to worry about these little Jim Henson puppets, demon baby puppets from hell. Like, I have to say, they were very well done, these demon puppets, and that whole intro was extremely well executed. I felt like it was a horror film. Now, for those of you who love horror movies, you're thinking, this movie was nothing. It was so piece of cake easy. Not for me. Even at 41, I was freaking out a little bit. Like, this is as far as I go with my scary movies. 
is Labyrinth, the opening scene. <laughs> I'm a lightweight when it comes to horror. And honestly, the little boy who plays the baby in this movie, I was really concerned for him because I know my kids didn't like scary things when they were little. And this baby looks like he's somewhere between one and two and a half years old. Maybe, no, between one and two years old, the baby in this movie and my kids would have been freaking out seeing these demon puppets everywhere so i was really concerned for this kid did he have trouble getting to bed at night during the filming of this movie that's what was going through my head as i was watching this and the baby did really well actually he started laughing with the puppets so the people on set must have been doing a good job of making sure that this baby was happy and there's a scene where they're throwing the baby up in the air but this baby is like flying into the sky and i had to check myself because i was thinking that they were actually throwing this kid way up into the air in a very unsafe manner and i was like what are they doing they can't just throw this baby around and then i realized wait this is a movie they're probably throwing a fake baby into the air <laughs> But I was really scared, like the mom in me was concerned for the baby and how it was getting thrown around. <laughs> so there's a lot of crazy shenanigans going on in this movie. Please let me know if you felt like this was a really creepy scene where the baby gets stolen out of its crib. Do you remember that scene when you were a kid? How did you react to it? Let me know your thoughts and feelings. Have you seen Labyrinth? Was it scary to you as a kid? One of the best parts of this movie are the puppets and the design and execution and the creativity that went into creating these puppets. Amazing. Uh, one of my favorite puppets was this ostrich puppet very interesting and i feel like if you're a big fan of jim henson and a fan of puppetry and creativity you will like this movie a lot and i don't know i was just in awe of the filmmaking process for the 80s i'm like this is where cinema like from a historical movie perspective just the creativity that went into telling fantasy back then like i look at the fantasy movies that we have today like lord of the rings and you know they didn't have cgi back then actually i think the owl was done with cg but that was super high tech back then the just it was it was really an art the way they went about making these puppets for this film one of the scariest and creepy scenes for me was in the forest. There's these red furry creatures that really scared me. And I vaguely remember this scene as a kid. I must have seen it somewhere. Uh, maybe it was playing on TV. But these furry creatures just take off their heads and they pull out their eyeballs and they rip off their limbs. I was horrified. I, I vaguely remember seeing it a long time ago. So to see it again in the movie, like I wasn't ready for it again. And I was just terrified. But I feel like if you're a huge Labyrinth fan, something tells me that you would really like this scene. Please comment below. Let me know what you think was the scariest scene in Labyrinth if you've seen it before. Do you remember the scene that I'm talking about? Were you scared? I mean, and how did you feel about the gremlin babies? I also feel like the scene with all the furry creatures in the forest was one of the best scenes though, on the other hand, because of the way Jennifer Connelly's character runs away and escapes because she like pulls off all their heads and throws them. She did what I feel like any sane and normal person would do and like wreck their game and run and skedaddle get out of there and i thought she did a great job with that and i was running with her i felt that fear and that angst or anxiousness whatever she was feeling and i would have booked it too so one of my favorite things about the film too is that there are a lot of things that sparkle and glitter in the film and i love that so much. One of my favorite scenes in the whole movie is where Jennifer Connelly's character is in some sort of dream, dream-like sequence, and she is transformed into this beautiful, it's almost like a Cinderella at the 
royal ball with Prince Charming because she's kind of lost in a sea of people and oh the scene is also a costume ball and I loved that about it because it reminded me of Phantom of the Opera. Have you guys seen Phantom of the Opera? You know the scene there's like a costume ball scene. She's meandering around in this dream sequence and she looks stunningly gorgeous in her 1980s dress and the dress is just screaming 1980s because it's so look at me which is very 80s. It's got the big poofy sleeves, all the sparkle, the big hair, and David Bowie in all of his 80s glory. I can't tell if there's any sort of romance going on. I don't think it's about that for him. I think it's that he just wants to distract her from her goal and her mission because he doesn't want her to win in the maze and he's using whatever means he can to distract her from her goal. I do have to say though, about an hour and a half in, I was definitely getting bored and I just wanted the movie to be over. I kind of felt like, okay, let's speed this up a bit, but there was at least another 20, 25 minutes left um, of the film. But definitely by the time she reached the castle walls, I was like, okay, speed it up. It all ends beautifully and well, as every good movie should, with a nice little bow and happy ending and all of that. She is much more grateful for her life and her family, and I did appreciate that ending. I can definitely understand Understand why this is a cult classic. It's those visuals, really. The story for me was like, it was good. It was a good story, but it's those visuals, that music, that David Bowie, if you're a huge David Bowie fan, which I'm not a huge David Bowie fan, I don't think this will be a film that I'll be watching again. But if you're a David Bowie fan, if you grew up watching it, if you like some of those scary elements, this could be a good fun film to watch, especially if you want nostalgia and memory lane. For me, the never ending story is my scary factor movie that uses the puppet Jim Henson style elements. I don't think Jim Henson had much to do with the never ending story, but I prefer the never ending story over Labyrinth for me. That is more nostalgic. If you're not a huge fan of Labyrinth, definitely go check out Never Ending Story. And let me know in the comments below how you feel Never Ending Story compares to the Labyrinth story. To me, the Never Ending Story is a better story in general. I like the lore in the Never Ending Story movie. I've read the audiobook of the Never Ending Story. Sorry, this is becoming the Never Ending Story review, but it's in that whole Dark Crystal, Labyrinth, Never Ending Story those dark 80s films never ending story wins for me it didn't labyrinth didn't take anything away from never ending story to me but it's the visuals for me that's what really wins in this movie and i wanted to see it just to say that i saw it and now i kind of know why people like it but it was kind of like eh. So let me know your thoughts and feelings on Labyrinth and what you liked or didn't like about it in the comments below. Please be sure to hit like on this video if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. All right, bye everyone.